Hi, this is Pam Price with Jumpstart Code. Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to learn how to create input elements that are typically used in forms or can be used um, when doing JavaScript. So the main element that we're going to start with is a text box. And the fundamental way to code this is with an input element with type equals text. So let's take a look at a very simple example and see how this works. So I've got a very simple uh, page here and I do have a form element. Input elements are often um, as part of a form. You have done this all the time online when you have to fill out something and then click a button to submit it. And so there are some other attributes and things that go along with creating a form. But for this video, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about creating the text box. So the simplest uh, code to do that is just this. This creates an input element that is a text box. So if I refresh my page over here and you can see that I can type whatever I need to type inside of that. All right. Now. Let's talk about a few other things we can add to this. Um, if I want to know what I need to type in this box right now, it's just a, a text box sitting there. There is an attribute called placeholder and I can say placeholder is enter user ID. Okay. So let's save, refresh my page and you can see it just gives me that text and I can then um, type over it, right? But in addition to that, it's often useful to have a label associated. And yes, you can just use a paragraph tag as you can see, I did something here, but a label is a very specific thing that we might want to use. So let me set up a, a label ahead of it and you can put it if you want it before, if you want it after, I'm going to say enter user ID. All right, so let's click this, refresh, and we see, let me make sure that I've saved, refresh my page, and there you see there, enter user ID. Now, when you're dealing with um, these types of forms, you want to always make things nice for the user. And so, Sometimes it's nice to be able to, instead of having to click here on the text box, to be able to click the label and the label knows that the focus should go there. So there is a way to sort of connect this label and this text box. In order to do that, I need to specify an ID for this uh, input and I'm going to call it user ID. So that's just a unique identifier. And then in the label, if I say four equals, and I use that ID, All right? So let me save, we'll refresh the page. And you see now, if I click the label, it, it um, puts my cursor into that text box. So that's just a useful um, user interface trick. That's, that's kind of nice. There are two different ways to do that. So in this case, the way I did the association was using this attribute for, and whatever it is here has to match whatever is the ID, All right? I'm going to show you a second way to do this. So I'm going to put a break here. So we'll start another one. I'm going to set up another one label. Uh, I'm going to say enter your first name. Now I am going to nest inside of this label my input type equals text. And um, I'll give it an ID of first name. Now notice I'm not using the for parameter there, but the difference is this input element is nested inside of the label. So I'm showing you two different mechanisms to do this. 
So now I have two different text boxes. If I click, if I click here, do you see it allows me to type in a name? If I click this label, it allows me to type in a user ID. So I can either click directly here or I can click the label in order to get access to that particular element, right? One last thing, um, when you are submitting your input to a form then or to a server, you really should use also the name property. And the name property and the ID property are usually set to the same values, which seems a little redundant, but they kind of have two different purposes. Again, the name property is not as important to me right now because I'm not setting up my form with a submit button to send the code over, but those are uh, important properties to be aware of that you use um, with text boxes, all right? So again, what we've covered is a label. We've covered the input when the type is text. And we've seen uh, two ways to associate a label, either by using the for property and you make the value match whatever is the ID of that element, or you can actually nest the element inside of a label. So obviously you'd only want to nest one input element inside of the label and that makes it associated with that particular label.